What is up YouTube? Welcome to another video. And today I'm going to show you guys how to go from zero lines of code straight into Docker and Kubernetes with Node.js. I'm going to take you through step by step and all the code I'm about to show you is all on GitHub. Links down below so you can follow along. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the docs.docker.com website and download and install Docker. So we're going to be using Docker for Windows in this guide. So install Docker for Windows, just follow the instructions, get it installed, it's very simple. Once that is installed, you go to the little system tray, you'll find the whale Docker icon, right click that, go to settings and that'll bring, take you to the settings page, go on to file sharing and you want to make sure you've got your C drive shared. That'll help you basically mount Docker uh, volumes and mount your code from your local machine into the container. It'll help with Docker mounts. And then once you have Docker installed and you have file sharing turned on, you can mount volumes. You want to go ahead and open up PowerShell. Just make sure you can do Docker PS and then we're, we are sure that Docker is now installed. So we're ready to go. Okay, so for those of you who are new, this is the Docker development YouTube series GitHub repo. Everything I do in this video is linked in the description below. It's all on Git. You can all follow along. Now with this app, I'd like to start kind of from scratch. So I got this Node.js folder and I always like to start with a uh, empty folder called source. So I put my source code separate from everything else. Um, I start off with a package.json. So those of you familiar with Node.js, this describes all our dependencies. So I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to do a hello world application. So I'm just going to use a package JSON with an express web server. So I'm going to run a web server with a hello world application. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the server.js in the source folder and I'm going to create a hello world application. All right, so I'm going to be um, starting up an express web server. I'm going to run it on port 5000 and I'm also going to bind to this host because we're running in a container. We cannot use localhost. We use 0.0.0.0. And then I'm going to go ahead and define our route for the app. So when users open up this in the web, in the browser, in the web browser, they'll get a hello world message. And then I tell my app to listen on that port and host. And then the last thing we can just do is just write a console.log in the console so we know our application is running. So now the beauty of Docker now is I'm going to need a development environment to build this out. So I don't have Node.js or anything installed on my local machine other than Docker. So the next step is let's get a development environment going inside of a Docker container. So outside of the source folder, I'm going to go ahead and say new file and I'm going to make a Docker file. So Docker allows us to do a number of things. The beauty about it is we can pack all our dependencies into a virtual file system. And that's what the Docker file allows us to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from node. So I pick, I pick a specific version of node. I'm running Alpine. So it's very small. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the working directory inside this virtual file system to slash work. That allows me to contain everything I do inside of that directory. And then the next step is I copy all the code from my, my source folder into the container. So the first thing I'm going to do to make it lightweight is I'm going to first copy the package.json file into the container in that working directory. This will allow me to do um, the next step, which is npm install. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that one. So npm install will allow us to pull all the dependencies. Now this is going to happen inside of this container image. So it's all nice contained packed and all the dependencies are inside the container image. Nothing on my local machine. This helps us keep our development environment and production environment the same. And then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to say copy the rest of the remaining source code in. So our hello world app. And then what I'm going to do is say start the application up. So this is the command you would normally run. Say node and then point it to a server.js to start it up. Now, the beauty about all of this, um, the reason why I copy the package.json file in first is when Docker runs this build, it's going to run top to bottom and it's going to cache each layer unless there's a file change. Now, usually when we develop, we make a lot of changes to the source code. So I don't want npm install to be running every time. So because the package.json does not change often, I copy that in first and then I do npm install. That means that this long process of npm install is not going to happen every time I change code. 
so this allows us to speed up the build time and get everything into the container as quickly as possible also if you're interested in debugging inside of a docker container i have another video coming up about debugging so the docker file is the place where we can start sliding in debuggers as well so we can attach a debugger to our image and actually work on our local machine mount the source code in and interactively debug and work as if the code was inside your machine not inside of a container so to build this container image it's very simple i'm going to change directory to the node.js folder and then i'm going to do docker build dot now the dot is the context when we do docker build docker expects us to pass a context folder path and because we've already changed directory into node.js the dot simply means we want to pass everything in in relation to this directory into the build context that means Docker as the, the build daemon will be able to see our source folder with our package JSON server JS as well as our Docker file. And then the next bit is I'm going to give it the image name. So I'm going to name this guy Node.js and I'm going to tag it with V1. So every time we make changes and push it to our registry, we can update our tag and we can have some sort of version number defined. Now, in order for Kubernetes to actually see our container image and pull it down, we need to push it to a registry. Now that we've tagged it, I'm going to do Docker push with the same name of the image and that is now going to go up to docker hub so you can also check this image out if you want to pull it yourself um, or you can define a registry on docker hub and you can push all your your images to the public registry all right so for to get a kubernetes cluster up and running you're going to want to head back to the docker settings that we saw earlier there is a kubernetes tab right there and what you want to do is go ahead and enable kubernetes and click on apply and restart this will go ahead and launch like a virtual machine with a kubernetes cluster in it it'll configure kubectl on your machine point it to the cluster so you can immediately start um, deployments now if you're interested please check out the video links um, the videos i have above the links down below to my i have a full um, kubernetes development guide where we go through how to install kubernetes on windows Docker for Windows, how to configure kubectl. We talk about deployments, configuration, secrets, um, the whole thing about pods, the networking side, the load balancing, service discovery, ingresses, and so forth. So I have a full deep dive hands-on guide so you can kind of follow along with that and get a full understanding of operating Kubernetes. So once you've enabled Kubernetes, what you want to do is do kubectl get nodes and make sure that your Kubernetes node is up and running and ready to go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl create namespace and i'm going to create a namespace called example app that's going to hold all our resources for this project now i like to keep things separate in separate folders so it's very easy to navigate the github repo so i recommend create a new folder call it deployment and what we're going to want to do is create a new file called deployment.yaml and what I'm going to do is this is going to be the, the, the Kubernetes manifest that describes the desired state of our deployment. If you're new to deployments, check out my link below to the video that I've done on Kubernetes deployments, where we actually deep dive through this entire YAML file and explain everything it means. So just at a very high level, um, we define a deployment, we give the deployment some labels, um, we also tell it we want two replicas, so two instances of our app running. Um, this is the container spec, so we say this is the image I want you to run. I always want you to pull the image, even if it exists. Um, we want to run port 5000 and just some resource limits um, to prevent our application from exhausting our server. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say kubectl apply. So in that namespace, I'm going to apply this file. That's going to go ahead and create our deployment. We can then say kubectl get ns which will show us the our namespace has been created and we can do kubectl for that namespace get deployments we can see we have a deployment ready to go and if we do get pods we should see two pods up and running so now our application is running in kubernetes so to make sure our application is running we say kubectl um, get pods we can see they're in a running state we grab a name of one of the pods we can do kubectl for that namespace we can run the logs command on that pod 
and we can see our message has been printed out so we know this application is now running that is the console log that we have in the server js file reporting here so we know we have two instances running they're all healthy all good to go now how do we access this now kubernetes has a concept of services so we um, we're able to create like a load balancer for these two um, pods so what we're going to want to do is go to our deployment create a new file called service.yaml and then we're going to define um, how Kubernetes should serve this application to the public or to other services within the cluster. So again, if you're new to Kubernetes, um, check the link up above. Um, I've created a, another guide on Kubernetes services, so it's service discovery and load balancing, explaining exactly how Kubernetes um, does this form of service discovery and how it load balances service. So we have the service.yaml, and what it does is we just say kind service, and we basically point to the labels of that deployment. So we wire up the service to that deployment by picking the same labels as the label selector. We then basically say we want to um, expose the service. The service's name is called example service, and it'll be running on port 80. So the service will run on port 80 and it will load balance the two pods on target port 5000. So this allows us to actually run all our applications on port 80 or a single port um, where the containers themselves can expose different ports. So if a user comes on the browser, they don't have to specify a port number, it just, it'll just work on port 80. Now, the, the cool thing about services, by default, a service is always called type cluster IP. This means that this service will only be accessible internally for other um, pods and services that are running inside the Kubernetes cluster. We won't be able to access the service um, through the browser or through a public IP. This is where port forwarding comes in. So the first thing we want to do is apply this service. So I'm going to say kubectl apply, point it to the service YAML, and that'll go ahead and create the service. So if I then do um, kubectl get service, we can see we have a service up and running. Now it's a cluster IP. So as I said earlier, it only has an internal IP, not an external IP. That means we'd have to use the port forward command to test our services. That is only if these services are private services. So if you want to keep them secure, you don't give them a public endpoint. You want to use the port forward command. This is similar to the logs command. So we're going to say kubectl, um, instead of logs, we say port forward. And we want to port forward to that pod and let's port forward on port 5000. So now you can see if I head over to the browser localized port 5000, we've hit our hello world app. So this a uh, port forward mechanism allows you to test your application that it makes it tells uh, Kubernetes or kubectl to create a proxy tunnel to the application so you can test it securely. Now for a second, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that service that we've just created because what I want to do is change this type to type load balancer. Now, what this will do is this will tell Kubernetes to create a load balancer. Now, because we're running Docker for Windows, it'll basically just emulate a load balancer on localhost. But if you're running this on Microsoft Azure or um, EKS or Google Cloud, um, you'll basically get a cloud-based load balancer. And that's a cool thing about Kubernetes. It knows exactly where it's been deployed and it will figure out how to create a load balancer automatically so that the developer doesn't have to worry about creating load balancers. So what I'm going to do is I'm then going to go ahead, I'm going to apply this file, so apply that service. And then when we do um, the get service command, you can see now we have an external IP. So now we have localhost. We do not have to port forward to our service. But this time you can see we cannot access it over port 5000. And that is because if we take a look at our service, we've defined port 80 as the external facing port. 5000 is the container port. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that port 5000. And there we go. We've hit our application. So now we have our application running on Kubernetes exposed through a load balancer. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out the links below um, to the GitHub source code, to the Kubernetes development guide, and stay tuned for more on how to debug Node.js inside of Docker containers. So until next time, peace.